Hello and welcome to What If, uh, What If 3, um, the sequel. Uh, if you haven't listened to them already, we've done two of these. These are in the middle podcast until we do season season six. Um, I had to think about that though. But yes, we're on to season six where we're going to be doing sequels. But uh, leave that for the moment because we've got bigger fish to fry in these mini podcasts, which only last about an hour. So if you're used to tuning in and you're thinking, is it going to be one hour 45? Is it going to be over two hours like Rocky Four? Nope. This is going to be about an hour, um, he says, but he hopes with his fingers crossed. Um, but anyway, Joe, always good. You know, if people have been listening to these. I don't need to introduce you, but um, do you want to introduce yourself quickly again? Yeah, I'm uh, Joe Horridi. I'm from the podcast WDW Teen Alert. And uh, I enjoy coming on to Charlie's podcast, The Rest of Junk. And uh, we share similar interests, shall we say, in movies. We do. Apart from James Bond related yeah. things. But yeah, mostly. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I always have a fun time coming on. And it's an honor always to be on Rest of Junk. Oh, no, and, the honor's uh, the pleasure's mine. The honor is ours. Oh. Um, Thanks. And if you haven't listened to Joe's podcast, I don't, I mean, regular listeners, hopefully you are already listening. If you're not listening, you really should. Um, it's it's fantastic. It's my go-to every week. It's on one very, very, very choosy list of podcasts to listen to. But I found it, what, four years ago? Yep, I've been with it ever since and will always be. Oh, thanks. I, I didn't even have to pay for that advertisement. No, well, you know, we'll find some sort of compensation. If I ever come over to Florida, you can buy me a beer. There you okay. Go. Okay, Definitely. that sounds like good. A big beer, Joe, as well. Not one of your All regular right. li- little beers that you have over there, that little half schooners or whatever you call them. I don't know. Whatever. No half pints. Um. Anyway, we the film that we are looking at today is well. I'll hand over to you, Joe. What film are we looking at? We are looking at Back to the Future, and this is going to be actors who almost played some of the major roles in Back to the Future or as Charlie likes to call it, what if? Yeah, I know. I called it, We shouldn't have called it that, but I called it that because I was rushing before I went on holiday. And I forgot that we, what were we going to call it? Uh, something like... Almost, almost, almost was. was. Yeah, see, I kind of like almost was, but oh, too late now. Well, that's um, fine. Uh, I think it's no uncertain. I don't think it's any secret, and it's probably a lot of people's favorite film. It's my favorite film of the 80s is it really is it yeah is it seriously your favorite it's pretty much damn perfect it's pretty much well it is perfect not of all time no that's that involves a shark and a shark and a boat and three guys but my i don't know the 80s film i mean it's perfect so i'm really looking forward to this because i haven't seen your list i've got some thoughts of my own but i'm really looking forward to you taking the driving seat on this one and then Let's let's just get into it. And I've expanded my list. I found Whoa. even more people. Whoa. It's insane how many people were being considered for this role. And these are all bona fide. You haven't just chucked in some names that you Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So uh I'm gonna we ask start you... with are we gonna reverse order or what? No, I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. Who was who was originally cast? As Marty McFly. Ah, well, you've come to my pet pet uh, pet subject well, here. Okay. It is Eric Stoltz, the the mighty Eric Stoltz. Um, you yeah. would be wrong. My the original. Friend. Okay. So the person that was first cast was C. Thomas Howell. What from the Hitcher? Yeah. And Soul Man, and yes. By the way, I don't think Soul Man will be available anywhere. <laughs> at any at any time, but still, yeah. See Thomas Howe, really? Yeah, and he uh, he was originally cast for the first two weeks uh, as Marty McFly. He had rehearsed with Crispin Glover and Leah Thompson. No, I did not know that. But after Mass became so popular as a surprise box office hit, the filmmakers decided to recast the role with Eric Stoltz. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought Eric Stoltz was the the uh, the original um i've been trying to find somebody and so full disclosure before we start i've been trying to find somebody to make me a back to the future t-shirt 
but we then um, instead of Eric, instead of Mar Michael J. Fox with Eric Stolt, because we've already got all the images that somebody could take it off and design it. One day I will get somebody to design me that T-shirt and I'll order five of them um, with Eric Stoltz in the role. I don't I'm, know why you'd want that. I'm a but... massive Eric Stoltz. I'm a massive oh, Eric Stoltz. Okay. Fan. I All right. Now that makes sense. Right. So. Um, do you, I, but do you think he would have done a better job than Michael J. Fox? Well, and thankfully, Joe, unlike the other the names that you're going to read out, um, we have footage. We can see exactly what he looks like because they filmed 70% of the film, was it? Hmm. Roughly about 70% of the film that they filmed. Eric Stoltz, all the interactions, all your favorites, well, most of your favorite scenes um, were filmed. And so you can actually see him in that role. Uh, you can see him going into Hill Valley in 1955 and looking around and, and doing all of that. Um, I, 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 yes is my answer, but with all of these names, it's very hard that anybody's going to better Michael J. Now that Michael J. Fox is in the role, would I prefer Eric Stoltz? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but at the same time, I'm not. I, can't, I don't think you can take anything away from Michael J. Fox. So I'd probably have to, sadly, capitulate and say, yeah, okay, I probably wouldn't have wanted him in the role, but the way that he was treated is just pretty dreadful. No, it's interesting because I do believe that he was the first one that uh, was it Zemeckis. Yeah, yeah it, Zemeckis. Yeah, it Probably, was. Yeah. It was like his first pick. That's what he wanted. And and Spiel, Spielberg was involved with it too. I think they both wanted Michael J. Fox because of how well he did in Family Ties. But do, do you know the whole story behind that? Uh, well, Mike? I know that they wanted, he had to film Family Ties in the day and film Back to the Future at night um, But by the time they finally got him. But before we before we move on to that, the it, Eric, Eric Stoltz has a point, okay, and this is one of the reasons why I like the guy. He sees, he's he sees things in characters, and he plays people in characters in in a certain way. He saw the ending of Back to the Future for what it was. Let's not sugarcoat this. The ending of Back to the Future, if you look at it in a certain way, is very depressing. Very depressing because. He wanted to play the film more serious. He wanted to, you know, he, he would have taken, for example, Doc Brown's death a lot harder because he's a more serious character. But the end in the Back to the Future, Marty changes, changes, is, you know, makes the change, goes back. There are his parents. His his dad's a successful author. His mum's very successful. You know, she's been pinched on the bum by the dad. You know, obviously everything's going well. His brother and sister no longer work at McDonald's. He works at the he works in the in the city. He doesn't know his family. He doesn't have any frame of reference for these people around him anymore. He's not grown up with them. He doesn't know any life experience. He's got nothing in common with him. He doesn't know anything about his family. That's the end of the Back to the Future. You know, and then, because he's going off to college, he wouldn't have much time before he gets, you know, back off to college, and then off, off he goes. So he's surrounded with family that he's no, he doesn't, he's had no experience with. And Eric Stoltz saw that and took that to the producers and said, that's how this film ends. It's got to be done in a bit of a, a serious way. Now, am I, am I happy that it ended with Rose? Where we're going, we don't need Rose. Yes, of course I am. It's iconic. It's fantastic. But he's right. I don't know who these actors think they are because I know Crispin Glover did the same crap where he complained about the ending and he wanted it changed. Yeah. It's like you're paid to be in a movie to play a role. You're not, but do you know why Crispin Gl Glover had a problem with it? Yeah, I, I do. Right, okay. Do you want to, do you want to tell our well, you'll say it better? I probably it had to do with the fact uh, that what's his name, his character profited off of off of the change in the future that he was trying to make it look like, you know, we shouldn't look at it as money as a goal in life or something like that. Something, right? something like that. And the fact that when he comes back, he's happier because he's got money. 
and he was going, it shouldn't matter whether you got money or not. It's about your character and about how you, the people that you got around you. That's what that's what his problem was. It's that, oh, good, look, his life's turned around. Everything's brilliant because he's got money and he's a successful author. Um, but that's what that's what he had the problem with, as well as what you just said. Yeah. Yeah, they both sound like a bunch of hippies to me. Oh, Joe. Eric Stoltz, and, and I find this amusing too, that you're such a fan of his because other than Mask back in the day, I really didn't know anything that he was in. I knew he was in Pulp Fiction because I really loved that movie. Mm. But I couldn't name anything else that he was in. Some kind of wonderful? I didn't see it back then. I only saw it from a recommendation from you, but it just was something I was never interested in seeing. Memphis Probably Bell? Because Memphis Bell? Never seen it. I mean, I did hear of it. Very good. But yeah, no, I just was never a fan of his, but he sounded like a jerk. It sounded like everybody was happy that he was let go. I was reading that, you know, he's a method actor and, and he demanded that everybody call him Marty, that they didn't refer to his real name when they, you know, even when they weren't filming. I mean, that's insane. Oh, so even it's when... all right for De Niro to do it, but no. Yeah, because he's De Niro. Well, <laughs> Yeah, but you can't criticize somebody Eric, for Eric Stoltz say, is not De Niro. Yeah, but, but, but it's still, if he wants to stay in character, he can stay in character. I, but I just, but again, he is not at the, I don't think he's at the level of Robert De Niro. Neither is Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf does that crap too. You know, like where he forces people to call him by his character's name. I mean, I think it's, it's, you know, again, it's, uh, it's just kind of stupid. I, uh, personally i i think anyway i mean is it that that big of a change for him he was was he a teenager at the time i'm assuming he was yeah yeah that he was playing a teenager uh you know and that he had to be called uh by a specific name of the character it's just you know kind of play yourself you idiot i i don't like the guy and again i i heard he made everybody's lives miserable then you get in a fight with biff uh what's his name uh tom wilson Tom Wilson, like he was again method acting, and he and he punched Biff too hard uh, during that first scene <laughs> in the soda shop. Oh, so, Joe, are you not even the slightest bit curious? curious? Yes, I am. I would love for them to release it. I mean, I definitely would buy it. I mean, if would you say over seventy percent was finished? I think they should probably just clean up the deleted scenes and just release them as a deleted scenes alternate. If, if give it give money like they they gave seventy million to Zack Snyder to make the Snyder cut, I'd rather see this. Yeah, I think it was probably more than what we had with uh, the Donner cut, you yeah. know what they had filmed. So yeah, I'm all for it. I would love to see it and compare it. I love stuff like that. But Do you want me to send you a T-shirt if I get five of them? No, you can keep. Come it. on, man! How cool would that look? You go around and go, whoa, whoa! Look at this guy. You know they what really... they'll say. <laughs> What? Over here in America, they're like, who is that? Who's Eric Stoltz? <sighs> My goodness. Has he done anything? Is that Lance like... from Pulp Fiction? That's what they'll say. They would never recognize him. But has he done anything in the 21st century? Uh, he's he's disappeared into... Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so, right, okay. So, so oh, all right, well, let me ask you. So, do you think... So, in your mind, do you think he would have been better... Than Michael J. Fox. I now that I see Michael J. Fox, and it's pretty much my favorite film of the eighties. Reluctantly, I'll have to say no. Yeah, but, I... but, but it's a cigarette paper between between yes and no. It's that I thin. you see, this is one of the I'm going to disagree with you. I mean, yeah, he could have been in it, but I don't think he comes even close to what Michael J. Fox did in this movie, where I think some of the actors on this list may have. But not Eric okay. Stoltz. Well, let's get into it then. All right, let's get into it. So someone else that was offered the role was uh, Ralph Macchio. <laughs> the, the karate kid himself. He, he turned it down because he thought the movie was about a kid, a car, and plutonium pills. <laughs> so when was... Oh, no, you focus me to say karate kid, which it is. Not karate kid or whatever that everyone else says. It's karate kid. Um that's for you, Dom. Um yeah. Yeah, he could he, oh. No. I, I no. I don't think he's I don't think he's agile enough. He's too lanky. 
Um, yeah, God bless the guy. He's got the the fountain of youth somewhere in his backyard. True. He has. He must. Do. Looks amazing. Never ages. But uh, I, I, think I even had Billy Zabka's Zabka's uh, nicking from that well as well. I think. Who is that? Um, oh, Cobra Kai. The, the other guy. Bill. Oh. Oh. Um, oh, the guy. I, I can't think of You're it. You're not watching Kerr Mackay. No, I'm not watching Kerr Mackay. Clearly, clearly, hold up. It's worth it. It's pretty good. No, I know who you're talking about. Johnny? Johnny, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, But yeah, no, he looks amazing. But yeah, no, I, I don't think he could have really pulled it off. He's got that. I, it's just his voice. He's too much of a, uh, like a Brooklynite, I would say. Yeah, that's, he's no comic timing. Yeah, I, I can't see him doing any comic timing, but I couldn't see Eric Stoltz doing comic timing either. Um, but I, I would prefer Rolf Macchio over Eric Stoltz, actually. Right. Okay. Uh, All right. Next one, John Cusack. Yeah. Well, yeah. You've 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 hit one of my uh, favorite favorite actors of the eighties. Um. Yeah, he he could have done it. He could have been, and I've just said that. I've just said Ralph Macchio was too lanky, and and here I am advocating. I'm such a hypocrite already. Um, yeah, I could see that John Cusack could play goofy. He could do um, uh, out outrage. He can do surprise. He can do all of that. He's multi talented. Yes, would be my answer on that one. What do you think? I would say definitely yes. I yeah. agree with you on that. And I actually think it's, and I love Michael J. Fox. He may have done a better job because from I, I, the previous I, I, movies. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, look at the types of movies he was making around that time. You know, one Better Off Dead, One Crazy Summer. They fit, he, he, he would fit right in. Because, you know, not only does he have good comic timing, but he's a good actor. Like, yeah, he is. The majority of his movies like he's got a lot of like range i would say if and uh, i think that would have been an interesting choice mm. i once got a thanks off him on twitter because i said his portrayal of brian wilson was uh in love and mercy was uh just simply outstanding and he just wrote back thanks all right. well that that's amazing that's fine <laughs> that's all i need I, oh are you kidding me i would love something like that <laughs> i'd oh, be no, very wrote, sorry you wrote thank you sir and, well, at least he didn't and say he put, he put the comma in the right place as well. well. At least he didn't say drop dead. You know, he probably would if he knew my politics, but still, never mind. <laughs> never mind. All right, so this next person, he actually was offered the role too, but he turned it down. Okay, Matthew Modine. God, no, no, yeah, no, no, no way. I don't know how that guy had a career as it was. <laughs> he was the thing I like, disliked the most in full metal jacket yes i would be saying yeah um yeah i couldn't see him pulling that off at all we went through matthew we went through matthew modine's films on that podcast which wasn't long ago mm. and i struggled to remember anything else he's in apart from stranger things he was in the dark night uh, of course Rises. he was birdie he was in a film called birdie yeah uh that's it honestly i'm drawing i say Oh, he was in, um, wasn't he in that movie uh, about the wrestler? The young wrestler. And oh, dear. Madonna did the song Crazy for Oh, you. Uh, Vision Quest. Vision Quest. Jeez. Yeah. A apart from that, to quote Andrew Dice Clay, I'm drawing a freaking blank here. <laughs> I have no idea. I liked that movie. I thought that was kind of cool for its time anyway. I've never seen it. All right. Johnny Depp. Uh, ah, well, 21 Jump Street, Johnny Depp era. Yeah. Yes. yes. Then yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I agree. And, and he could have done, he could have done anything that the, the directors wanted him to do. He could have, he was that good an actor. Uh, I, but don't get me wrong. Up until then, he'd only done, he'd only been the, been sucked into the bed in Nightmare on mm. Elm Street, but twenty. If 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 you could just fast forward 
a bit and see the 21 Jump Street Johnny Depp, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, and he was also lucky he met Tim Burton. But yeah, no, I, I definitely could see it. I, I think that, I mean, if, if we're looking realistically of the character of Marty McFly, I think a lot of girls would have been attracted to him, especially his mother. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll go with that. I didn't think that we'd find this. These are good. These are good, Joe, because I don't didn't think we would find already. We found two that we we think could replace Michael J. Fox. I didn't think we'd get to, but yeah, I agree. Yeah. Johnny Depp. Yeah. So this is actually, I think this is the last one I have for Marty McFly. Okay. Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Joe, you keep putting, you keep doing this to me, man. You keep putting. Charlie Sheen in and and getting me to comment on Charlie Sheen. He's very popular at the time. Oh, he's always winning. Um, uh, uh, do you know what? Just just because it's the last one, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say, and I know you're gonna say no because you hate the guest of his Sheens. No, oh, I. I that's right, not necessarily on. true. No, I only hate, hate one of them. I only hate, hate one of them. One of them. <laughs> Um, who was and, Cher, and Cher the same level of yeah. who do you hate more Emilio Estevez or Cher Emilio Estevez oh wow crikey that is some deep seated stuff um, Charlie Sheen yeah yeah I would say yeah, yeah too yeah. <laughs> why not yeah no again he's a good looking guy you know he could do comedy um, I think he would have worked out fine in that actually Speaking of comedy, have you watched still? Have you watched Men at Work yet? That ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> if I get Jack to watch Joker on your podcast, would you watch Men at Work? No. Oh dear, it's that but it's not that bad. It's not great. It's probably it's that three out of ten, but it's worth it just for the. Why would I want to watch a three out of ten movie? Because because th- th- there are. Good three three out of ten films. There's only so much breaths of life left in me. I'm not going <laughs> to waste it on Emilio Estevez not really acting with a movie with his brother. Um, well, it, all right, okay. Anyway, we'll move on. Let's, let's. All right, so now we're up to the role of Doc. Okay. And uh, there's a lot here, and there are a lot. Now, of I'm more willing to hear replacements for doc even though the two of them go together like ham and cheese or plowman's mm. or pickle no it is it's hard to imagine now that we've had the movie and we all i think most people love that movie it's it's very rare we hear somebody say well back to the future that sucked or i like uh i like part three better than part one <laughs> you know um, well if you like westerns you, you might do but mm. Well, either part, but I think the first part's the best out of the three, and and, I, and it wouldn't be a part two or three if the first one wasn't as good. The as fly, it was. the flying train at the end of Back to the Future Three just annoys me slightly. Yeah, a little bit, and plus those movies were basically just remakes of the first one <laughs> in a way. Um, well, that's a bad thing. But no, no, but it was done well. I will say. Right, you know, it was fun. Anyway, so uh, this was the person that was originally offered the role and declined, uh, John Lithgow. Yes, that'd work. Yeah. Uh, so John Lithgow, my first uh, ever uh, watching him was when we watched. I think when I was about eight, we watched The World According to Garp. Mm. Uh, when it came out on. Uh, on video, so no, I was possibly nine because it was eighty, and then eighty-one, it would have come out. Um, yeah, I, I, you were nine I, when you watched the world according to yes. God. Look, my parents did a lot, lot of stuff, right? Okay, and TV, you know, we watched things when they were on, um, and it was just easier to to have me stay up. I watched the Life of Brian when I was same age. I didn't understand some of the things in it, but I mean. Yeah, uh, my parents just plopped me in front of the TV. I felt very much like Bill Murray from Scrooge. There's just, as a kid, 
when he goes back and sees his dad, I was just put in front of the TV all the time. Hence why I am who I am, Joe. Or a cable guy. Yeah, well, I wish I had I wish I had that. That is a great film. But anyway. Um yeah, John Lithgow, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can kind of see him too. I, I do per, probably prefer Christopher Lloyd because he did such a great job in the movie. He did. He did. And I don't think he would be as animated as Christopher Lloyd, John Lithgow. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, when he did Third Rock from the Sun, he was very. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of that John Lithgow, and yeah. you know, not the one from 2010, the year we made contact. Which podcast fans will come up on my, one of my sequels? I don't know. What I'm going to do it oh, with cool. you. Cool. Well, uh, Joe, I haven't asked you. Is it something you would do? I would. Yeah. Okay, because it won't make any sense to 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 man. I'm not sure about Dom. I don't know how much of a fan he was of 2001, but yeah. If not, it might just be the three of us. Might be the two of us. Who knows? Sounds good. Okay. I'm on board. Anyway, I'm... all right. Next. So, uh, this is one of your favorites, <laughs> Steve John... Martin. Uh, yeah. Well. I think I said on a previous podcast, there's nothing that man can't do. So, especially back then, yeah, man with two brains is it was around that time. It's just that's just pretty much perfect. Um, yes, and uh, yeah, because animated. You not not so long after Back to the Future, we saw him in Roxanne. Very, very animated. Mm. Um, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Reprecked when he was reprecked. Think of him. Think of him as doing all those crazy moves and things like that 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 Doc does and that startled look. Yes, to Steve Martin. I think that they would look different too. I I, I could picture Steve Martin like wearing glasses and not with the crazy hair uh, that Christopher Lloyd had. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I, I can kind of see him. And I was a fan of Steve Martin back then. I still think again I would prefer Christopher Lloyd, but um, but yeah, I think he could have brought something different to the role too. Maybe even made him funnier. And um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that might be the first one that I say. Rather than yes, I can see it. Yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. Maybe it would have got more people. To... Well, I was going to say maybe it got more people to see it. I think everybody on the planet saw it, so I don't think there was any. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it was a box office draw in that sense. Um, yeah, okay. I might reserve my, I might keep my powder dry until you come up with an absolute belter. Um, John Candy. No. Mm. Definitely not. I love, I adore that guy. I don't love that guy. I adore him. No. Yeah, I, I think he would have made him a lot weirder. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I mean, Doc was weird as it was, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I love John Candy too in so many things, but, yeah. uh, and he is very funny, but I, I just can't see him playing a, a scientist like that. No. Uh, Chevy Chase. No, no, Chevy Chase shouldn't be allowed anywhere near, <laughs> anywhere near most things, apart from Clark Griswold. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the guy, but I actually could see him. Wow. You know, and again, it, it wouldn't be the Christopher Lloyd version. It would probably be a different one, but uh, I could see him pull it off, though. Oh, God. It it would just look like Clark Griswold in a lab coat. It, it's just, I can see that you're going for, you know, goofy, but the reason... Clark Griswold works is because it's the reason why the character works and, and Chevy Chase's best character is Clark Griswold is because he's an idiot, but he knows he, he knows he's a lovable idiot. I think we're still, we've discussed this, haven't we? Tarantino said the difference between Bill Murray and Chevy Chase is Bill Murray turns is a is a bit of an ass a hole, 
and at the end redeems himself. Mm. And Tarantino said, ah, that's why I like I prefer Chevy Chase, because Chevy Chase is always one. But he's lovable with it throughout the whole film. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I still I could see him. Uh, not like again, I'm not a fan of his because of the type of person he is outside of the characters oh, yeah, he plays. Yeah, horrible, yeah. But um I think he could play like an eccentric scientist type. And I can kind of picture him, you know, again with glasses. Uh, maybe not with the gray hair or anything like that, but uh, yeah. You're thinking of him in Fletch. You're thinking of all the disguises and things he has in Fletch. Fletch. No, Joe, it's, that would be a no from me. I don't say. think of Fletch too much. I've only seen it once, and oh, that was God. enough for me. Oh, dear. All right, let's move on here. Who <laughs> else have we got on the list? Gene Wilder. Oh, yes. Yes. No, oh, yes. yes. I yes. agree. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the the sort of young Frankenstein like blazing subtle things things to not to camera, but to Marty? And like, do you know what this means? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that too. Like, I could say, Marty, do you understand the ramifications that can occur? It's terrible! It's terrible. <laughs> yes, we found it, Joe. That's it. It's not going to be beaten. That's the one. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's the top of my list, I would say, yeah. as someone that could be in it. Gene uh, Wilder, just starring Gene Wilder and Michael J. Fox. And you can see Gene Wilder in on the on the cover. Oh yeah. Oh no, he wasn't on the cover. He wasn't on the cover of Back to the Future. It was just Well no, well, oh it was just Marty. It's just Marty. And then is I can see him on the cover of two and three. Hmm. And 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 by the time you get to three, Gene Wilder, we've already seen him in a western, so we know that he can do all the western stuff. Per- That's perfect. true. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. You know, you're not <laughs> going to do any better now. No, I like, still got a lot. It's crazy. Well, you have much... to cut down. You'll have to cut down Doc a bit because we're. Uh, How far uh, are we? About sort of halfway. Well, you know, we can kind of just go okay. quicker. Uh, Dick Van Dyke. Ooh, that's challenging. Um, no, uh, I, I, this is one of those things where I don't think you'll find anybody on the planet, anybody on the planet that doesn't love Dick Van Dyke. I think it's, I think it's pretty much universal. Mm. For me, it's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. For other people, it'd be Mary Poppins. It'd be Bedknobs and Bridge Six. It's all, all types of things. For me... It's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's the family film. It's the it's the thing I grew up with most. But sadly, I'm going to have to say no. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. No, he's, he seems like a really nice guy and everything. Yeah. Um, and he probably could do it, but I just don't think it would have been as good. Yeah, um, sadly, that's sad. Sad. Joe, don't do that. Don't don't do that to my heartstrings, man. I feel bad now. I've said something. <laughs> I've said something bad about Dick Van Dyke. No, he didn't. I would well, go through my whole life things. without saying that. But okay. Uh, Robin Williams. No. This came up on a previous one. You asked. You asked me about. It wasn't Breakfast Club. It was. No, it was Batman. N- no. Absolutely not. One hundred percent no. It would just been the Robin Williams show, and you'd forgotten about the rest of it. He would have led most of it, and everyone would go, oh, 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 isn't Doc Brown funny? Back to the Future. Robin Williams is really funny because he did all that. Do you realize he had led most of his stuff? No. No, 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 no. Don't touch this film. And you can have all the others. Of course you can. Yeah, he would have been like what he was in Flubber, you know? Ugh, and again, gosh. it wasn't that great. Yeah, I'm glad he wasn't in it. Can we do... A, can we do are we allowed to say, if we've already said we think Jack Nicholson's overrated, am I allowed to say... Robin Williams was. No, I agree. You know, I, okay. I, I, right. I kind of feel right. that way too. Um, Do you know I, what? If there is outrage in our listeners, you write to us by all means. We always, we always welcome. Discussion. I think his his best role was of the genie. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Dead Poet Society. I will never watch again for the rest of my life. Okay. No, and Good Morning Vietnam for the same reasons. Yeah, just, same thing. Yeah, that was I overplayed. Agree. It was mm. everywhere. That soundtrack was everywhere. You just heard the same things. Forrest Whitaker was good in that film as well. All right, next one. Eddie Murphy. 
No. Yeah, nope. No. Can't no. see it. Definitely not. Not because we don't want a black dot brand. I mm. don't want somebody that's going to that that had found his niche in the same year. Beverly Cop oh, look at that. No, Beverly Hills Cop was in eighty four, wasn't it? Is it eighty five? I should know. Yeah, you should 84, know. Eighty four. But anyway, around that time he found the thing he did. You know, the foul mouth chancer that took chances and did all this stuff. He then had the golden child coming to America. That's the Eddie Murphy niche. It's not this one. Yeah, and I agree. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. Hmm. What do you think before I say what I yeah, think? I would say yes. I would actually say yes. Because, you know, which Chef him... Goldblum? Oh, which one? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, no, he, Jurassic he, Park, Jeff he could Goldblum. Be a, he could be a scientist. He's tall and lanky. Um, you know, again, he plays a younger version of himself and an older version of himself. Yeah, I could see him. Yeah. Uh... He's played the scientist when he was with Gina Davis in The Fly. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's a nice mention. Nice little segue. I didn't mean to. The Fly 2, starring uh, uh, Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz. And uh, Daphne Zuniga, who was uh, in The Sure Thing with John Cusack. See? Probably one See of the how few we join everything back seen together. That. It's probably, you're probably one of the few people that have seen that movie. Oh, it was massive over here. No, was it really? Yes, it was, Joe. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you know who this is, but you'll know who it is after I say uh, Michael Gross. Do you know who Michael Gross is? Yes. Uh, he was um, his dad in Family Ties. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But also in Tremors. Oh, what yeah. Film, what film? Um, no. Yeah. No. no. Well, because it would have been. You might as well just say Patrick Duffy, and it's like, no, definitely not. Well, I think if he was in it, people would relate it too much to Family Ties, and it was kind of hard for him to. Uh, Michael, uh, you know, Alex Keaton was huge over here in the United States. Yeah, and it was kind of hard to even imagine him being in a movie without thinking of Alex Keaton. But he was able to pull it off with this one. Right. Now, if, if they had Michael Gross in there, it would have been a real tough call to try to separate family ties from back yeah, to the future. That'd been weird. And the, what, who would have, I was going to say who, who'd who have played is uh, Lorraine Baines. Uh, would it have been Jason Bateman's sister? Uh, Mallory. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Bateman. And then what, you'd have to find a role for, um, what was her name? Meredith Baxter Burney, the, uh, the mom in family ties. It'd be Lorraine. No, because you'd, you'd have to have Justine, is that? Justin Bateman. So you'd have to find the oh, role, no, I was role saying, for no, the, no, no, Justine Bateman might be the the girlfriend, uh, Marty's girlfriend. Jennifer. Oh, right, okay. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, that work. <clears throat> uh, Peter Boyle. Uh, yes, because I love Peter Boyle. Oh, you yeah, do? I do, I do. Um, I remember like films like the dream team with michael keaton and uh, michael keaton christopher lloyd peter boyle stephen first the dream team mm. 1989 great film really really funny film um i'm gonna say yes i'm gonna say yes i can see that he's he's I, i've seen him at his at his best of course he's probably the most famous for our american listeners everybody loves raymond but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's got great timing. Young Frankenstein. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see him. Uh, but again, he'd be a different character, uh, I think. Uh, you know, other than the fact, my, my one issue is that, again, he, he's got like sort of a New York accent, you know. Um, and you always think of, well, Christopher Lloyd his whole voice was completely different. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of thinking of some of the people we named on this list. I'm comparing him to them, but anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I could see him. Uh, Donald Sutherland. Uh, uh, right. Okay. You've come to one of my other favorites. I mean, Donald Sutherland is Hawkeye Pierce. I mean, I know Alan Alder. Uh, no way. But Donald, <laughs> Donald Sutherland 
Do you seriously? Do I am you serious. Yeah. Over yeah, Alan serious. Alda. Over Alan Alda. And, and I love Alan Alda. I know you do. I, I, but I love Donald. Sutherland I am just calling you up more. and telling you. I'm, I'm going to call up Alan Alda and say Charlie actually prefers. Do you, want to, do you want to phone Donald Sutherland while he's there? And you might as well get want to get Elliot Gould and Tom Skerritt. Get them all together and say that 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 film is amazing. I. I I grew up on Mash the TV series. Oh, and you need I, to go watch I, Mash the film. I it's couldn't just... watch the film. It was just so boring. Why? What do you I... mean it's boring? It's 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 genius. It's got some I... great lines in it. Did you watch the the movie or the series first? Uh, the series. Okay. But but getting back again, to Donald man, Sutherland, a, yeah. Um, yes, because I'm taking the Donald Sutherland from Kelly's Heroes. Yes. Oh wow, you know Kelly's Heroes too. Oh, I love Kelly's Heroes. Mm. Yep. That that Donald Sutherland. Yep. Well, no, I would actually kind of take him again playing it more seriously, like a more refined scientist. Ooh, okay. Um, but yeah, I could see Donald Sutherland in the role. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be a little strange, you know, but uh, I think he would do a good job. Mm. Uh Dabney Coleman. No. Yeah, hundred percent. No, I've walked yeah. out. Of, I've walked out of two films in my life at the cinema. One was Interview with a Vampire. The other one was Short Time, starring Dabney Coleman. I waited. <laughs> I waited outside. I didn't even go in the pub. I waited outside the cinema for the rest to get out, and I said, "Did it get any better?" And they went, "No, it was SH One T." Oh, that's cool. So instead of staying there, you waited for the audience to come out and say, "Did oh, it get any better?" I waited for my ride to come out. Oh, okay. <laughs> he did. He didn't want to come out. That that film is the sheer definition of dreadful. It's worse than my best friend's wedding, which I thought was dreadful. Pretty Woman. Oh God. Dear God, these, he was these films are classic, I, but no, short he, time starring Dabby Coleman, terrible. I, I thought he was good in Tootsie. Um, no, but he, all right, no. no, yeah, we won't go over that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I agree. Right. Oh, wait a minute, okay, he was good in war games. That's it, that's all. I'm no, giving war you. games, that's right, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, we need to move on, we need to move on, yeah, we, we okay. All right, well, let's move on. All right, can I just like throw down? I'm just going to throw all the names down. Uh, we'll just and then, do yes or no. All right, okay. Because I don't have too many for, I have nothing for Lorraine. What? And, yeah. Okay. And, and uh, I just have Jennifer and one for for Biff. Oh right, okay. Uh, uh, let's do the let's do the quick fire because I'm sure we can. Yeah. Let's do the what? Let's do the quick fire for the rest of Doc. Harold Ramis. Uh, yes, I would say no because he'd be too much like Ghostbusters, you know. I yeah, think that's true. Too I, much. Yeah, you can't um, have the two biggest films of the pretty much the two biggest films of the eighties where he plays. Yeah, it would be the same character. But Harold Ramis, though, oh. no, he's great. No, I, I won't yeah. say he's great. Richard Mulligan, you know him? Uh, yeah, from Soap and uh, Empty Nest. I'm, I'm Punky Brewster. Um, oh, is it that him? I I, I thought yeah. it was the guy from Night Court, but uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, I watched all. Of, I watched all of those. Um, yeah, you all right? You, I'll make you decide in that one because yes, I, I don't. I don't even know who he is. <laughs> yes. Okay. You do. You um, know who he is. If I showed him your photo, you go. Yeah. No, I probably you know, wait. He's not the father in. He's not the guy from Police Academy. No, that's mm -hmm. um, uh, William. No, not William Gaines. He's not Good the one who goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you. When you see him, you'll think, "Oh, wait, that is him, right?" But I'm going to show you a picture. I, I thought it was Bull from Night Court. Um, but I guess I was wrong. All right, while you look over that okay, picture. Okay, there we go. Right. Okay, can you see that up there? Uh, not really. Um, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. From soap. Soap. Yeah. With yeah. Billy Crystal. And... Yeah, yeah. You're right. I yeah. can see him. I can yeah. see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was great. He's my favorite character in soap. 
Um, <laughs> oh, oh, now he is. Yeah. Oh, oh, him. Right. Okay. Oh, him. Yeah. yeah. If you, if we were looking at pictures, it'd have been a lot easier for me. No. Right, okay. We'll do that next time. Uh, Danny DeVito. Definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Bill Cosby. The, 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 setting aside, uh, setting aside recent events, or yeah, or even events at the time, we 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 on this podcast can disassociate ourselves whether mm. or not that's right or wrong. But we are discussing whether or not somebody would have fit an actor at, at that time. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I'll say yes too. I, I think I could see him. Yeah. Uh, I could see this next one, John Cleese. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. He gives yeah. Uh, he gives Jim Wilder a run for his money. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's still Jim Wilder leading. So? Yeah, yeah, Jim yeah, Wilder right. leading. But uh, oh, John Gene... Cleese. Look, look, we need to get off John Cleese quickly because otherwise I just start going into all my monsters. I'm stuff. trying. I'm all rushing right, through okay. this now. Uh, Gene Hackman. No, God, no. What from? Uh, did you? Well, I've just recently seen. Well, I've recently lined up, should we say, to watch the conversation. Um, you got Popeye Doyle from French Connection in Back to the Future. No, hundred percent uh, no. I'm going to disagree with you. I, I think he could do it. I think Gene Hackman can do a lot of things, um, but Crimson Tide, though, can we just can we just have a shout out for Crimson Tide? Oh yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> And Denzel in that. My goodness. Mm. Two powerhouses at it. No, that was great and, and even in the periphery, you've got Vigo Mortensen, you've got James Gandolfini, you've got people like that in the background. Meanwhile, they have to stand back and just bask in the aura of these two actors going at it. That's amazing. This is one of your favorites, uh, Michael okay. Keaton. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, we know that he could have done. Yeah. No, he would have done, you know, and it's. I think that would have elevated his career because I think after Batman, he just kind of disappeared, you know, um, well, when he, he stopped did, playing Batman. Well, he still did Pacific Heights and things like that in between. Yeah, but those weren't, but I think this, I think they would have been more focused on Michael Keaton than they would have um, Michael J. Fox if he was in the movie. So so we can see it now, the, the scene where Christopher Lloyd goes, Marty, Marty. Do you want to get oh, yeah, nuts? No. That's nuts. That's <laughs> nuts, Marty. <laughs> no, I, I, but I could see him, though, for sure. Right. Uh, yes, Dudley, definitely. Dudley Moore? No, I love Dudley Moore. Peter Cook and Dudley Moore are like the famous yeah, favorite no, comedy no, albums, but no. No, I couldn't see that. No. Uh, Great as Arthur, by the way, but no. Henry Winkler? No, too nope. ingrained, too ingrained in, yes. in hit their character. No. But he was great in uh what was that thing Rest of Michael Keaton? Oh. No, Michael Keaton, uh Night uh Night Shift. Night no. Shift. Yeah. I, I he was great in that. I like that. Uh all right, last one. Okay. James Woods. No, God no. Love that guy. I love that guy, but no. James Woods is too. So when I went on, when I went, because I've just got back from holiday on the way back, I watched Rogue One on the way there. I watched the hard way with James Woods and Michael J. Fox. Mm. Weirdly. Um, he's He's so, so good in that film. And as, as is Michael J. Fox, I might actually prefer that to some of the other Michael J. Fox films like secret, my success and bright lights, big city and team wolf and things like that. Um, Michael J. Fox sends himself up as a privileged movie star perfectly. Have you seen that? No, I haven't, but oh, I remember when it came worse. out. It was so good, but no. But but the chemistry between them in the hard way is beautiful. Yeah, no, I could see him. You know, I, I honestly could see him just because he's a good actor, and I think he would kind of pull himself back a little bit. He wouldn't be as angry as he was in mm. a lot of other roles he's been in. And um, yeah, I could see him not as good as Christopher Lloyd, but uh, I could see him. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, I couldn't find anything for Lorraine other than Leah Thompson. And I think, uh, you know, her, uh, they, they had some like actresses I never heard of. So I didn't even mention them. Uh, but Jennifer. So, do okay. you, you know the story of Jennifer? 
Yes, so it was Claudia Wells. Yes. Um, and she didn't come back for Back to the Future 2 because her mum got sick and she had to be a carer. That's that's correct, yeah. Mm. But uh, originally she was replaced by this actress called uh, Melora Hardin, which I kind of looked into her and she's been in some movies, um, but nothing major. But what was interesting, so she... She was playing the uh, character with uh, Eric Stoltz. Hmm. So it was like, I guess she filmed scenes with Eric Stoltz. Um, and then when Michael J. Fox came on board to play Marty, they had to get rid of her because she was much taller than Michael J. Fox. Oh, right. Okay. And so they That's... brought Cla- they brought Claudia Wells back. Hmm. She, she first dropped out because she had a scheduling conflict, not... What you was know, she in though? Is there anything? I mean, I don't even recognize the name from the eighties. Oh, what was that movie? Twenty nine dresses or whatever. Uh, I, I forget exactly, but again, it was nothing major. Okay, you know, she's she's a very attractive, you know, woman now, and she probably was a very attractive girl too. I thought but, Claudia Wells was very attractive, but then along came Elizabeth Shue. Yeah, Elizabeth Shue was. I I I sometimes forget. You know, they, you know who's who in, in which movie. I think they both did fine, and it doesn't bother me that they replaced one or the and other. Elizabeth Shue is one of those people that you go, okay, I know she was in Cocktail. And then I'm looking through, like, list of films on kind of like my media library, as we call it. And mm. I'm thinking, wait a minute, she was in The Saint with Val Kilmer. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember that. She was in Adventures in Babysitting. She, she was. was. In that. She was very good in that. Yeah. All right. Last one. Okay. This is her Biff. Uh, Tim Robbins. No, but I'll have Tim Robbins as Doc Brown. Mm, why? Because of Howard the Duck? <laughs> uh, yeah, go on. That, that's probably what my subconscious was telling me, Joe. But now that you, now that you mentioned it. Yeah, could he do Goofy Scientist? Yes, he's already done. Well, he did it a year later. I think he could do Biff, but Biff was pretty damn cool. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, I wouldn't. It's hard I, to imagine anyone else other than him. Yeah. Next, you, you know, you. I thought you were going to bring out a huge list of names like Harvey Keitel or something like that. And I'm like, right, okay, no, no, that was no. last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's it. That's so all we, we got. got. So we got enough. Back to the so I've got Back to the Future. Perfect Back to the Future with John Cusack and Gene Wilder. That okay, sounds good. That sounds I'm, like a good I'm, movie. I'm to watching me. that. Yeah. Meanwhile, if I get the drawing commissioned with Eric Stoltz, I'll start make sure I send you a. I told you I don't want it. No, no, I won't send you the T-shirt. I'll just send you the picture. All right. I don't know. You can obviously, I think you can commission people to do a picture. Can't you? No, you could. Yeah, I'm sure you could. You could probably do it yourself with Photoshop. Uh, I'm not that good. Just get somebody else to do it. Yeah. yeah. That one. Anyway, right. Do you want to tell the, the lovely listeners um, what film that we are finishing this quadrilogy of uh, uh, films? What are we doing next? Next one is Raiders of the Lost Ark, and we got a lot of names for that, too. Are you doing just Raiders of the Lost Ark or the series? No, just Raiders of the Lost Ark. Because I was going to say that if you're doing the series, then it'd be like, you know. Well, the... it's, well what was it? Yeah, they, they, the trilogy, that, that was all in the 80s, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so 80, 80, 81 for Raiders of the Lost Ark, 84 for Temple of Doom. 89 for temp, uh, Last Crusade. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, 89. Because uh, what when, when was uh, Hunt for Red October? 90. Oh, yeah, because he filmed Last Crusade around the same time. So, oh, I don't know. The career of no shout- I, I, it's not a submarine movie loving, but, you know, today, but let's have a shout out for Hunt for an October, which I believe we shouted out on the last podcast as well. But yeah, I might go yeah, and watch that now. A lot of submarine movies, Crimson yeah. Tide. What's I tell you the truth, I prefer Crimson Tide. 
I know you're going to say I'm crazy. Well, no, because there's no right or wrong answer. There's no right or wrong answer on that one. They're both brilliant. Yeah. But it's just the the Alec Baldwin. I know it sounds silly, but I... I, Flip a coin, Joe, and you're right. I I kind of feel like uh, Hunt for October is, is, is too dramatic or like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or not that Crimson Tide is is a comedy, you know, but it it just seems a little lighter for me if that makes any sense whatsoever. That makes no that makes no well whatever. Well, apart from Tarantino's dialogue where he rewrote it, but parts well, of they it. were you know they weren't fighting the Russians, you know. Oh, there anyway, were, yeah, but well, yeah, both were. Oh, you've just got me thinking now of the the analysts that. Um, Alec Baldwin meets in the briefing room and he goes no, politicians when we're not kissing babies we're stealing the lollipops and I can't remember the, that guy's face well you know I'm just going to say really quick with Crimson Tide it was it was, it was was more Gene Hackman versus Denzel Washington yes in, instead of you know like Russians versus Americans you know what I'm saying um, well it, was, it turns out to be Russians versus Russians but yeah I mean, that's it's it, it's never really it's for a oh, moment. Oh, you mean uh, Humphrey? Yeah, for well, a moment it's about Americans, but until they yeah, okay, until they that, tap. That, yeah, that's my point. Is you know they, they were confined confined to a submarine, and mm. it was a battle of wills. Hmm. Uh, anyway, other submarine films. I was about to say 1941. Let's not go there. Um, you didn't like 1941. Well, it's not, not not we can't talk about it in the same sort of, um, you know, what a submarine movie has to be a, a a movie set on a submarine. Otherwise, I can have Top Secret, where he has the magnet, he, he has the big magnet when he turns it on, and he said, "Oh, it's designed to attract submarines from miles around." And Val Kilmer ends up turning it on, and one crashes through the wall. Top Secret. Who's one, the day, one, with, uh, one day we're gonna do who's that. The one with Harrison Ford? K nineteen, uh, the Widowmaker. Yeah, you know that I actually was on that submarine. What? Yeah, it was parked outside of uh, the pier in St. Petersburg. And uh, my friend was down for a visit and we were in downtown St. Pete. And, you know, they they offered like, you know, so you can go on it for free. And I was like, oh, cool. How could you go on a, on a, sub, on a submarine like that for, for free? What? what? I don't know. We just did it. It, <laughs> it was, you know. Are you sure it wasn't some guy at the front just said, I think no. we all, all nipped off for a whiz. No. And then charged it was a real $10. submarine. Right, okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it was tight. Oh, my God. I don't know how the hell people survived in that without getting claustrophobia. Yeah. Like, we, I went through the whole submarine, you know. Wow. Jealous? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm jealous of, yeah, I'm jealous of that. Um. Anyway, right. So, uh, until next time, Joe. Always a pleasure, my friend. Um, Same here. We've, we've kept it to about an hour. We did it. Oh, That's good. pretty good. Um, let's see if we can do the same uh, when we uh, record the next one, which we're about to sort out right now. But until then, I'll say cheerio. See ya. Cheers. <laughs>